Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson from Excalibur. I have my special guest, uh, Tom Petley from Halo ITSM joining me today. Hi, Tom. Good to see you again. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Great. Um, now, as everyone knows, we're Excalibur is very excited to be a Halo ITSM partner, uh, and we've been uh, working with the team at Halo uh, uh, in uh, the very exciting things that Halo can do. Uh, in, in this episode, we wanted to share with you uh, the visual workflow and automation engine. Um, Tom, one of the things that's so important is to allow customers the ability to visually be able to build a workflow or an automation. Simple workflows being, as an example, that are fairly common would be things like an incident or service request is opened, say it could be from the portal or it could be by the technician, but it's going to email the person requesting it, details on it, and of course you can take any details from the item and include them in the email, uh, but that would be an example of a very simple automation. In, in many of our demos, we get asked questions on a little bit more complex automations. Um, and of course, the, 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 the platform is set up for that. Um, but one of the things that, that is usually uh, something we hear from the customers when they've seen it in a demo is just how, and we talked about in our first episode, the intuitive nature of Halo, um, how, how straightforward it is and, and visual it is in order to build something that could be more complex. We can get super complex, of course, <laughs> but given the time that we have, um, we don't want to build a half hour <laughs> automation uh, that it will take. And, and I kind of refer to that as kind of the system voodoo. It's the things that the administrators of the platform can do uh, to make things happen almost magically uh, within the platform um, to make that the user's life easier. And that goes to that intuitive nature, uh, but it also goes to helping our overall user experience, be that the uh, technician experience or the customer experience. So Tom, I know uh, you have an example you wanted to share with us on, uh, you know, give everybody a chance to see the, the automation engine, but also uh, let folks kind of see just how easy it is to build something that has more than just a couple basic steps to it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, I thought, let me just share my screen. I thought today we might just talk a little bit about um, Okay, not going overly complex, just a, a reasonably basic uh, change control workflow. Um, we're going to build a couple of steps into, I'm going to show you a couple of steps of how we can have multiple kind of layered approvals and also some of the kind of the workflow engine that sits behind it as well. Um, so I've actually got an example change here, just a decommission uh, request that's come in. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through a little bit about the workflow, which we can see here from, from new authorization implementation review and then closed. I'm going to talk to you about the approval that sits behind it as well. So before I submit this for approval, I just want to talk you through just a little bit of the example of that we've got set up here. So within the configuration, within our approval processes and our change approval process, you'll see here this is just a nice example of a kind of a semi-advanced, I'll say kind of a medium advanced uh, workflow. We've got kind of multiple layers of approval and it all ties into our kind of workflow engine. So within here, you see we've got two layers to this approval, two steps. Um, the first one being um, approval by myself. And I'm kind of taking the role of the change, change manager here. Um, so I'm deciding whether it's gonna to go to cab or not, or whether I can just approve it myself. And you'll see here under the approval options within here, um, we have all these range of options on kind of who the approvers are. So here I've got a fixed agent, which is just a, a person that's um, a licensed agent of Halo. Um, we've also got the options of cab. So that's where our second step is going to come into it, where we have our fixed cab. Um, first step is going to be myself. And you'll see under here actually as well, it's worth showing. Um, if you want to take it a step further and make it more complex, we can actually use rules to determine how these approvals work. So whether it's different CIs or different uh, services that are going to be impacted, that can kind of create dynamic rules off the back of that uh, to determine who our approvers are. In this case, we're going to go with a fixed person, which is just going to be myself. And then the second step is going to have a fixed uh, cab. Um, so it's going to have a different R change advice board at that stage. And when we go back into our change, I'm just going to set this to submit for approval. I'm just going to send a a very brief approval note to my approver. I'm going to save that. 
and you'll see that's now been submitted for approval. And under the approval process tab, you'll see here that the um, it's gone to myself because I've set that as our first step. And as an approver, I can either approve it from here. Um, I've got two options up here. I can also approve it via email. So I would have actually received a nice email to let me know that my approval is required. This is really useful if, you are, if your approvers are kind of out and about a lot. Um, they're not always kind of inside Halo, um, kind of working within it. They can actually just go to an email hit a ticker across. These are just images. They can be a thumbs up, thumbs down, however you want it to be. And this little variable here, this all fields variable, just populate with all the details from that change. So they're all going out onto an email. So the approvers got all the information they need. Um, click the button and then they can put comments on it in if they want to as well. And just a final option as well for the approvers are the ability to have a kind of an approval page where they go to and they can just go through all their approvals in one go. As part of this approval, I wanted to demonstrate the kind of the workflow capability of the product. So we both built in two steps to our workflow. And I'm just going to approve the first step here. So you can see it's going to go on to our cab. And then our second stage, our cab has got these three members in. And then depending on exactly how we want it to go, we can um, we can say everyone requires it. We can say different roles require approval, or it could just be a simple percentage we need kind of a majority to approve and then it goes through. So lots and lots of configuration options around that. And finally, just the bit I want to highlight is this, the actual how the workflow builds into it. So you'll see here that we're now on to stage three of our workflow here, the implementation stage. It's now been approved. We've um, kind of simulated that approval. And if I just go back into the configuration, this all builds into our workflow engine. And you'll see here that everything we're doing is in the in the browser. It's all um, stuff that the idea that the system admin can do. Um, it's something that if you do want to kind of adapt processes, it's all just a drag and drop builder here. And if I just edit this, you'll see that we're kind of working through the different stages of our approval. So we've submitted it for approval. We now have different events here where we the approval process is approved and it's going to go forward in the process. If it was to be rejected, we can then decide, OK, that's going to go back to stage one where they can resubmit it. Or possibly you'd rather it go straight to close down here. So there's lots of kind of very configurable options. I'm not going to go into details around all the steps of how to configure this today because um, because the engine is extremely, extremely powerful. Um, today, I just want to give you a little kind of snippet and overview of how the, um, the capabilities of the system show you a little bit about some kind of real life scenarios about going through those multiple levels of approval and hopefully it's given you a bit of a flavor for kind of what halo can kind of achieve so the flexibility is here we've got a workflow design and that workflow design has some of the automations attached to it um, and we can make this as sophisticated or as simple as we may want from an administration and a configuration perspective um, but this is you know, very visual and straightforward and gives us a lot of flexibility. Uh, it's one of the, 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 the many features that Halo brings to the table uh, for its customers um, to give them quick time to value, um, give them the ability to stand up processes uh, very, very quickly. It already comes pre-configured out of the box, well aligned with the ITIL workflow uh, and, and can be adapted to suit the customer's needs. One of the things we always talk about with our customers is change management happens to be one of the most frequently configured pieces within any ITSM system because each organization has very unique things that they do within their change process. Incident and service request management is generally pretty straightforward. Um, but with the power of the Halo platform, we're able to really give them um, a very robust experience that'll align well with not only best practices, but also their organizational practices. So it's so, so exciting to, to, to be able to share some of the things that we're able to do with the Halo platform. Uh, we look forward to having uh, you, uh, you join us again um, as we share some of the other very neat things that we're able to do with the Halo platform. Tom, thank you for joining us today. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Mike.